guys, welcome to Talk Tagging to Me. My name is Brooke. And I'm Elizabeth. And today we're gonna to talk about Lockheed Martin Innovations. Today we're here with Brendan McKay, an industrial and systems engineer who manages the advanced sensors and technology group out of the Santa Barbara facility. So Brendan, is it true? Can sensors save the world? Absolutely, thank you for asking. I think they can. Uh, at Santa Barbara Focal Plane, we make infrared sensors, and more and more we're seeing various types of commercial applications for these sensors, ranging from environmental to medical um, and across the whole board. No longer are the infrared sensors that we're developing just for the warfighter or for fighter pilots. This has really been um, enabled by both the technology maturing as well as the cost coming down over time, just like we've seen with the visible camera industry with what's going in your cell phone. So let's take a step back and break it down for us on what is an infrared sensor. So just like the cell phone camera that you have in your phone that looks at visible light, um, an infrared sensor essentially works the same way except it's detecting radiated energy as opposed to visible light. So this radiated energy doesn't need any reflected light. It's going to be the same whether the lights are on or off and we're able to develop sensors that can look at the whole infrared spectrum from short wave to mid wave to long wave. And there's various types of phenomenologies and applications um, for these types of sensors. What are some of the commercial applications for this technology? Sure. One of the most recent applications we have developed with a company called Surfs Optics Corporation and Providence is a multispectral flare combustion efficiency monitoring camera. So what is a multispectral flare combustion efficiency model? <laughs> uh, so I guess I'll break it down first thing. Um, if you've ever driven down the coast of California or Texas and seen an oil or gas facility, you've maybe seen a big flare that's constantly has a flame come out of it. So these flares are burning off extra hydrocarbons that can't be processed in the oil and gas facility. And so up until a couple of years ago, these have never been monitored. And so the EPA came out with a mandate that said, just like your car has to get smogged, now these flares have to have a certain combustion efficiency so that we can keep our air clean. We can do that in real time right now? So to create this camera, we put a micro lens array directly on top of the focal plane. This breaks up the image into, in this case, 16 unique images that are real time imaging across 16 different unique spectral filters that are right in front and the optic. And so how it works then as a final camera is the, these spectral filters get mapped to certain hydrocarbons. Um, and so that the camera can detect and identify all these different hydrocarbons, feed that information back to the flare operator real time, and then the flare can be adjusted by raising the temperature or adding more oxygen to be able to appropriately burn the hydrocarbons that are coming out. Why is it so important that we do it in real time? These flares are constantly changing. You can imagine um, in an oil gas facility, you're pumping oil or you're processing oil. What you're getting out isn't always the same. And so what's coming out isn't always the same. So it's important to be able to have a technique that can constantly adapt to the changing uh, conditions of the processing facility. And so if you were to just go smog test one time your stack, you would get one reading and two minutes later it would change and it would then be polluting again later. So you need a way to be able to constantly monitor and constantly adjust the flare so that you're always burning a efficient non-polluting stack. So what are we doing in the future with this type of tech? I like to give the example of if you've ever gone through TSA and had your hand swabbed, well that same thing can be done with a multispectral sensor. Um, there's also plenty of other emission type applications where we could be looking for different types of leaks or other types of flares that are burning different um, chemicals it can be tailored to keep all of those within compliance as well. Well, joke's on me. I got my TSA pre-check last week. <laughs> and thank you for coming to the show, Brendan. It's been awesome to have you. Thank you. And don't forget, we want to talk techie with you. So make sure you comment with your questions below. And who knows, maybe we'll answer it on another episode. Bye, guys. See ya.